Okay, it's great to speak today with Rich Baker, CEO at Wattbike. Rich, how are you doing? Oh, good, thanks, Gary. Yeah, yeah, you know, I think everyone's uh, feels a bit odd at the moment and a bit apprehensive about what's going on uh, in the world and locally and with their family. So, but, but yeah, in the scheme of things, good and being positive. Good. That's good to hear. Good to hear. Yeah. Stay positive. That's the important thing, isn't it? Right. Yeah. Um, so maybe just to start, can you tell us a little bit about you uh, and your background? Um, and I suppose also your journey so far with Wattbike, because you've been with Wattbike a, a few years, uh, obviously now at, at CEO of the company. Yeah, that's right. I mean, whistled top uh, tour really through the, I go too far back, but I come from a military background, uh, spent a, a few years in, in the army, um, learning a few skills, life skills uh, along the way. Um, and then I uh, I went to, to Teton Gym, uh, had uh, seven years with, with Teton Gym, which was a real sort of grounding into uh, more of a corporate and fitness uh, world. Uh, went through a few roles there, right across uh, account management and working some consumer areas and hospitality uh, as well, which was a great experience. Uh, and then when, uh, actually whilst I was at, at Teton Gym, I came across uh, Ian Wilson, the founder of, of Wattbike, who was uh, also involved in Concept2. And as a triathlete, um, and I'd say triathlete at the time, I wouldn't class myself as a triathlete these days, um, a triathlete at the time at, and with a sports science background, I, I was sort of asked to have a look at this this new product called the Wattbike and effectively write a green paper on the, on the product uh, for, for the company. I mean, on a personal level, it was a it was really it really was a game changer there was nothing nothing like it at the time and, and, you know, this, this is different and at the time i was i was heading up a, a role of um corporate um and medical um uh sectors and sort of growth markets for for, for tech gym and we had we didn't really have anything measurable and so suddenly there was a tool here that was measurable and i thought this 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 again for that mark these markets uh it w was a real um game changer as well Anyway, I didn't get listened to too much uh, in my green paper and sort of say, look, I really think we can license this or you can do something with it. Uh, that, that didn't happen long, um, but I stayed in touch with with the guys at, at Wattbike because they were sort of growing their business and, and connected them a few places along along the way where I felt the bike would fit fit well. I ended up leaving Tech Gym, moved out to France with my wife and set up a business out, out there for a couple of years. Not long after we'd, we'd set the business up, I got a, a call. Um, or got, I was back in touch with, with Wattbike and said, "Yeah, would you like to sort of interview for this role as sort of commercial manager, sales director type role?" It's fairly fairly loose, um, uh, um, and it was just when the angel funding had sort of come into uh, to Wattbike in, in 2011. I said, "Look, I've just started this business. I really can't, but you know." Um, um, but then, uh, over months or two by, and I, and I met. Uh, John and a few of the other people was like, look, this is, and I knew the product, I thought, yeah, look, this is too good to be true. So I ended up moving back over um, and uh, wife <laughs> running the business in France on her own uh, for, for a while. Uh, and uh, yeah, and, and, and first role was sales, sales, uh, commercial sales manager, director. I think the scope of had been quite loose because there was, there was a small group of us, you know, effectively around the table doing doing lots lots of roles, and uh, uh, yeah, that, and that was uh, nine years ago. Uh, we'll be oh, nine years in December. Yeah, yeah, nine years in December. And so your yeah. wife did move back in the end, yeah. She didn't stay in France. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She, she stayed in France. We lived apart for over a year uh, while oh. she was in business. So, yeah, and then we we got some people to run that business, and we we sold that business on now. But uh, yeah, but there was a there was a transition there for a while. I mean, I was pretty busy, but it was, yeah, you look back and go, did we really do that? Uh, but yeah, we did, we did. Yeah. Wow, wow. And so obviously nine years on, um, your bus the business has, has, I'm guessing, changed fundamentally. Um, and so maybe we, we'll talk a bit about new products and, and also talk about, I think, about indoor cycling, because I think it'd be really good to get your perspective on what the pa pandemic has done for indoor cycling. But if we start um, with new products, so this summer i think it was you you released the next generation what by catum obviously it was your flagship product um so a couple of questions how has that product been received um and i suppose perhaps uh, of equal importance are you managing to keep on top of demand yeah well, it's been received really well um we i mean it exceeded our expectations we we were always had the, the atom 2017 and we, we launched the next generation um we went out to customers and said look you can upgrade um and we'll share that that upgrade cost with you and that that just completely flew uh, you know 
beyond our expectations. We'd ordered ahead of that, um, um, but uh, yeah, I mean, we, we, we've we've you know bluntly struggled to keep up with the demand, um, uh, and that's just that, that. But I think that's the sector itself. Just trying, to, you know, you can't suddenly manufacture thousands of bikes overnight, and and, and they they're on the water for a certain period of time. So we're working on that. You know, that is a big focus for the for the co company, um, but we're getting there. We're working through those lists, and uh, you know, uh, we're uh, be assured we are working through it very quickly. And you know, for for us, we want to be in a position where we were um, previously, where we can do a delivery in you know in in three to five days, and that's where we'll we're, we're ultimately get back to. Um, but it, um, you know, with, with the pandemic as well, and the demand on products, and the the demand around the whole fitness space, that that makes things more challenging. Yeah, yeah. So how do you manage customer service? I'm guessing that's one of your biggest challenges because customer yeah. buys products and yes, your website will flag a certain lead time for that product to get to, get to them. It, are you getting much pushback from customers or, I mean, is that, is that a sort of pinch yeah. point for you as a business? It, it, it's a big one and look, we, we, we haven't got it right. Yeah, and we're a bit of, well, I'm, I'll be the first to say, to say that. Uh, and I think we probably, we, you know, well, the way the way I and the analogy I use is we've grown two years probably in four months, uh, and and that's great, you know. Um, uh, and, and you can you can is it exactly that? But but it, it's not far off in terms of the profile, um, and, and in many ways we're putting um, steps into place to, to deal with that. But you can only do so so much, and we we just um, sometimes it's just manpower, but sometimes it's the way we communicate, and 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 there's things in there systems you know our can our systems and processing accounting systems keep up with with that so does that all slow things up and so the process internally takes longer um mm -hmm. getting the factory up and systems up the factory up up to speed can take a number of months rather than days so um but but, but ultimately they're things we've got to get right you know and, and put in place and so which we which we are but but where we went wrong is we just we just didn't realize it quick enough and yeah. i think uh, where we are now picking up the phone a lot more and 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 in myself to a certain, a certain extent but getting more resourcing to pick the phone up to people and say look we know you're frustrated but this is where we are we'll keep keep talking uh we just just couldn't keep up with that initially um we're getting there now and and uh, uh and there's more processes coming into place to, to look after that but it was that that's been um frustrating for all of us and particularly particularly yeah for, for all of us really um, because our customers, you know, they are they are the what bikers. You know, we want them to stay with us, and it can be a great product. They've had a great experience. We've all we've all been there with a with a great product and had a poor experience at some point. And to know that I'm leading a company that's given me a, a poor experience, even though I know my, my team really care, but we've fallen short in in, in a number of cases. It, it's uh, it, it's it's been really frustrating for us. So, uh, but we recognise it, and and uh, we're not totally bad you know we, we pick up we pick up the slack and you know we're not we're not um it's not like we're not doing anything about it but um i'm very aware as you can probably tell <laughs> yeah no absolutely well absolutely i think it, it it it's it's a testing time isn't it and i think as you say the the pandemic has given a boost to indoor cycling which is which is great for your business but there's there is a growing pain that, that you have to go through i'm, I'm, I'm sure so yeah. i suppose in terms of the market itself um as a, you know as a, a smart bike operator you're you know obviously highly active within within the space um the pandemic has just boost, boosted the category massively what, what are your observations on the market this year any did anything really surprise you in terms of what happened within the market this year and i suppose as we get into the the key um autumn fall winter season uh for the northern hemisphere uh how do you expect things to shape up and also i suppose Long, lots of concatenated questions here, but how do you expect? You know, what do you see the longer term for indoor cycling as well? So yeah, great to get your perspectives on that. I, it, it's it's a it's a fascinating. It, has it surprised me? No. Uh, uh, um, um, we 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 knew the propensity for people to start riding indoors, invest in that space was already high, uh, mm. particularly in, in the UK, which is our you know our lead market uh, and our, our brand awareness is is high here. Um, you know, I use the analogy of the two years, you know, uh, growth in four months. In fact, I think this is what's it's, it's happened. You know, clearly it's, it's, it's happened in terms of our, our sales and the profile of the company. But I think even in the way people are thinking about and prioritizing their, their fitness or the way they want to go and, uh, um, you know, do fitness from home or ride indoors, that that's driven that forward. So I think 
because we weren't sure of how many people were really considering. It's really hard to measure. I mean, we've had a number of conversations about how do you measure this market and what parts of you are you measuring it? Um, mm. And people are entering into this market from, from different areas. And so we knew, we knew it was big. So it's not that surprising what's happened. I think the continuation of it probably surprised us more. So that first couple of months going in, we go, OK, these people were thinking about it before and it just didn't take a lot to get them across the line. What probably surprised us was sort of month four, five, six into, the, into, into this pandemic. Uh, and then it just was well, just not slowing down. And of course, we're now going into a, you know, into a winter season. Um, but I don't think we can even think about winter and summer seasons anymore because we're now getting people that are, uh, are indoor cyclists rather than cyclists coming indoors. Um, and so we're seeing a lot of our customers now that are, aren't actually cyclists. You know, do they actually own a bike or any sort of like her and go out and, and, and belong to a club or ride with friends? A lot of them are saying, well, actually, I, I don't. I, you know, I, that's not what I do. I might do now. I might actually start going out and I might, I'm now interested in buying a road bike or a mountain bike. But that they're taking cycling as their, their piece of cardio at home. And I think that's in, engaging for a number of ways because, you know, we all enjoy uh, riding a, a bike it's a great way of, of, of pushing ourselves and, and of course the platforms are there to keep it social uh, mm. so there are factors in there but I think again what are we talking about the market and those the bit for us now is those market segmentations and understanding them better and what what's driving each of those communities and how far you know how do we segment like, segmentize those, those communities as we as we broaden our brand of appeal and approach uh, and educate the market because because your brand is quite unique isn't it in that you have a a strong sort of cohort or customer base within other sports so football players rugby players um, other other athletes will be using the what bike because of your connections with governing bodies uh, and and so on um do you see that as a big growth opportunity as well or as, as alongside this sort of lifestyle uh, consumer if you like as you say who's predominantly just an indoor rider and may not necessarily ride outdoors it's it's always been part of what we do uh, and I think it, you know, that well, we don't have. To, we're very fortunate that because of the product we have, the authenticity is there. Because we do have, we do work with you know elite and professional sports people that, that buy into our product first. Um, I think the, the the bit for us now is is edu it's that education, yeah. And 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 what's so why do they use it, and why is it important to them, and why would it then be important from a health side perspective as well. Um, and so it is really important for us. We're actually, you know, very proud of our sort of roots and heritage and the way that we work with, you know, elite sports teams and personalities uh, and and governing bodies across the world. And and we're, we're just, you know, the work we do with the UCI example uh, example is through the World Cycling Centre is more about is was well, totally about that development of uh, athletes um, around the world and from from uh, sort of underdeveloped cycling um parts of the world as well so so that's really core to what we want to continue doing in cycling and in other sports um but i think actually it, it can be quite scary for some people to go well actually i'm not an elite sports person i just want to be able to you know keep my you know sort of cardiovascular health in in good order but actually that's that they are joined up and so i think there's a lot we can advocate from this sort of end of the spectrum right across and so the challenge for us now is to segment so the the markets we were talking about before, but at the same time go, well, how do we educate? How, how do we make this really simple for people to understand of why or what bike is going to give you a better experience, better data than, than uh, potentially other products? Yeah, yeah. So that, that sort of segues quite nicely into a question I um, uh, just, just thought of, that eSports and accuracy. So it'd be great given, you know, that what bike and, and you know, claims with accuracy, other other products are available. So we have to be quite careful with this. But what, what are your thoughts on um, esports, the UCI World Championships um, and how um, we, we see this category? I think it's just fascinating how it's exploding. There's a broadcast element to it. Yeah. To get your perspectives on that would be, would be really cool. I'll tell you how seriously seriously we take it. So we, we've got a PhD study going on now at the at Loughborough uh, Sports Technology Institute. Uh, we started that formally a year ago. We were talking to them for two years prior to that, um, mm -hmm. as well as the UCI and other people about how do we get a global standardization of power. Um, if you go and buy a 250-gram pack of butter from Tesco's um, and there are other supermarkets, it might be Asda or anywhere else, but you get those packs of butter and different brands, um, they will all be within, you know, they're, they're regulated and they will be within a, a very, very tight percentage of that 250 grams. 
that's not happening in the power meter market, whether it's on, on bike power meters or it's on indoor trainers and devices. So that, that's that's pretty serious um, sort of consideration. And if you look at the elite sport end of, the, end of it, uh, riders contracts are being governed by their power but if they're changing power meters and they're being governed by that there's a huge variance in that power so then you come into the your question about the indoor um esports piece i think it's fantastic i think it's it, you know it, it's it's we we need to grow it um as a, as a sport it, it's 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 allowing more people the opportunity to be competitive at whatever age or ability that they have you don't have to be a world champion you can go and ro- ride at a different level and race with your friends on, on platforms um but it but we do take it really seriously that you know if, if you are racing and there are jerseys on the line for this uh, and there will be money on the line uh, as this progresses um it has to be regulated and it has to be independently re- regulated so how do we do this and as a group of um products and brands and manufacturers out there how do we come together to say this has got to be fixed and at the moment that that, that piece isn't happening and that's a concern. Have- you, you have hope. Do you think UCI are listening? Do you think that they they? They are. I think they are. I think actually pre-pandemic, I think there was there was um, there, there was some conversations that we were having saying, look, you know, it might be an idea for you to lead this conversation, and I think that they were taking that very seriously. Um, the pandemic hit, and they had some other issues to deal with without a racing calendar. Um, so I do think they are taking it um, seriously. I think it is completely new, new to them, and they've got to understand it. Um, but they're, the fact that they've supported this year's and uh, regulated this year's event is to show that we, we, we recognise it. We know it's here, and I think we'll, we'll see a bit more interaction around it uh, going forward. But uh, from, from our point on that, all, all we can do now is, 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 is look at our own products do this research, make sure that we're as good as we say we are and continue improving. So when some sort of standardization comes in, we know we can still say, yeah, look, this is where this is where we are. Um, and we always want to be that gold standard. And it might be okay for others to be silver, bronze, bronze standard, but you know, it, what, what does it mean to be gold to us? Well, it, it, it means it's gotta be less than 2%. Uh, and that's right the way through the, you know, from zero to two and a half thousand watts or, or plus. Uh, um, but it, it, and it's actually okay if it's something silver because that might be okay for some people as long as, as long as it, you know it's 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 accurate through its lifespan. But there's a lot to consider here, uh, and I think even more so um, the esports piece. But I think the data in itself is going to be valuable from a health um, point of view. Um, you know, and, and it's quite interesting if you look at getting to pulling this subject around a bit here, Gary. So apologies, but but the wearables fascinate me. Because yeah. they're variable and they're hugely variable, and but they bec- but the reliance on the data is becoming more and more important. Um, and so, again, going back to what bike, I just want to make sure that what we do, we can we can say, look, absolutely, we look at this and we take it seriously. So, if you're investing in a in a what bike, you know that data is true. Um, yeah, I my, it's quite a serious subject, right? No, 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 you're absolutely right. And I think, as, as you point out, if jerseys and money are on, are on the line, it it. it, it you know, accuracy is everything. I think credibility as well. I think, you know, you make, make a very good point. Yeah. Um, you also made the point about investment. So that's good because it kind of segues them off the final question. Um, so firstly, congratulations. So Piper is, is a specialist in investment firm, invested 11 and a half million recently in, into Wattbike. So congratulations for that. Um, how are you going to spend the money? <laughs> <laughs> We're working through that at the moment, but obviously we <laughs> We pitched them uh, and told them how we would like to, where, where we think the opportunity lies and where this money should be spent. I mean, I, I should add that we've known them since the start of 2016, so they've been on quite a journey with us over a number of years and, and, and have been interested for a long time. So, and that's great because that really helps that partnership. Also helps in terms of doing this deal through through the summer where we couldn't meet each other uh, and it was all very much over the similar si- similar sort of form as this. But. Um, but they are you know, a great investor because they invest in the brand um, and, and the growth of that brand and, and where they think that, that can go. So, so um, you know, believing in what we believe is a story and then then participating in that and, and pulling that around is, is, is really valuable as well. To answer your question, um, the, the, um, the, top, the top line level of that is we want to 
become an international brand and then recognize an international brand you know our brand presence in the uk is is very strong but it's not as strong around the world so it's it's looking at our opportunities globally and prioritizing those and investing in in certain areas internationally uh, and, and growing our, our presence in, in in certain regions um we'll continue to to invest in in our products um we're, we'll, we'll continue to invest in our hardware products and some of the services around that we can we can offer to 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 our what bikers um and we'll also invest in the business itself so the infrastructure so we can continue the growth and we go back to that question before about you know customer service it's an area that we'll be we'll be investing in to make sure the experience across the whole brand is really consistent Fantastic. Fantastic. Well, this has just been fascinating as always. We could probably talk forever, but you've got stuff to do. <laughs> so uh, thanks ever so much for your time. I wish you all the best with uh, with the growth of the business. And yeah, let's keep in touch and speak again soon. Great. Thanks again, Rich. Thanks for your time. Cheers. Cheers. Bye. Bye.